You know when you're talking to a woman and all of a sudden the conversation dies and you have no idea what to say? Mark Manson, the author of Models, calls this blanking. You're sitting there awkwardly and the more uncomfortable you feel, the harder it is to come up with something. Eventually you blurt out something like, so where do you live? Using statements can prevent this a great deal. Instead of fishing for a new conversation based on a generic question, you can simply comment about something or observe something. Never underestimate the power of non sequiturs. Here are some examples. I'm thinking about quitting drinking. A car almost hit me on the way here tonight. My roommate eats peanut butter and mayonnaise sandwiches. It's disgusting. I've always wanted to visit Africa. Pretty much anything that comes to mind about something that you can think of in the moment or something that you've been thinking of recently. These will sometimes come across as random, but that's because they are. They're whatever thoughts are popping into your head at the moment. It's better to be random and interesting than predictable and boring. Don't be afraid to just blurt something out. This works because unlike questions, statements require no investment from the other person. You can say whatever you want and there's no implicit expectation for her to generate conversation as well. Speaking in statements is important in it that it forces you to share yourself with her. The amazing thing about speaking in statements is if you do it correctly, she will start asking you questions. He also says instead of asking a bunch of generic questions, make assumptions and make statements instead. So instead of where are you from, say you look like a California girl. Instead of what do you do for work, you can say, you seem to be a creative person. I bet your job is interesting. How do you guys know each other? Translates to, you guys look like you've been friends for a long time. You should cold read as much as possible. Anytime you're asking a question that requires a factual answer, take a stab at the answer instead of asking. There are three things that will happen, one or the other, when you make these statements. Number one, you'll be wrong and she'll correct you. Number two, you'll be wrong and she'll ask you what made you think that. And number three, you'll be right and she'll she'll freak out how perceptive you are. So making statements is more interesting than asking questions, I guess is what he's trying to say. And here are some conversation topics that Mark Manson advises us to get into. Your passions and favorite things to do, your dreams, ambitions, life goals, the best or worst things that have happened to you, your childhood, family life, and upbringing. Write down three things for each of those and go back to what you wrote down and talk about it to yourself for one minute. Try to be as detailed and honest as possible. Man, that sounds like uh, a fair bit of work. <laughs> At least it feels like it would be, I mean, it's not that it'd take a super long time, but just thinking about those things and coming up with honest answers to them with as much detail as possible, that would take a fair bit of effort on my part to answer these questions. That's what I learned from my reading today of this book. Let me also share something that I learned from Ali Abdallah's workshop this morning about setting goals and achieving them in this year, 2024. Relationships are usually the most important things to people when they reflect on their life or past events. Like when people state what the best thing that happened to them this year was, it's usually regarding some sort of relationship. He also mentioned this in passing and I didn't know Ali also stumbled across this as well. He said, everything is perfect the way it is because everything is happening according to the source, God, whatever you wanna call it. And he defined success as making progress towards things that matter to you. He said, three to five goals is the optimal amount, too many, and you'll get overwhelmed. The goals that you set dictate your life. Choosing what you work towards determines your life. And this was something crucial that I've heard before but completely forgot, which is have a goal, have a plan of how to achieve that goal, and have a review system once a week where you review how your progress has been and if there's any adjustment that's needed. That last point is so crucial and there's actually a whole course based on that one concept called Lifebook and it costs hundreds of dollars. I bought it such a long time ago, but basically that's the whole system of Lifebook. You set your goals of what you want, you write a plan on how to achieve those goals and you review how you've been doing and any changes that you need to make once a week. I've just given you the entire $500 program of Lifebook with those few sentences. It's so powerful and yet I forgot the third part which is review once a week. So since I'm doing stream of consciousness writing anyways, I should take that time to review what I've been doing up to that week at the end on Saturday or Sunday based on how well or how I haven't done so well uh, that week. So those are some of the things that I learned today. Today I also had a mastermind call that Niels and I hosted that we have once a week with small YouTube creators. The weekly calls are getting bigger and bigger. They're act it was like over 12 people or something like that today. I actually preferred when it was a bit smaller between three to five people or something like that where we got 
kind of intimate and more detailed conversations about what's going on in our life or struggles or something like that regarding YouTube as well. But I guess it's also cool that our weekly calls are growing in number in, in terms of the number of people participating. I also watched Dancing with the Stars. Of course, it ended a long time ago. Don't spoil it for me. I haven't watched the finale yet. I have to watch the semi-final and final. I'm rooting for Jason Raz. He probably won't win, but I'm rooting for him. And he's doing pretty well, so he does have a tiny chance. There are people who are a bit better than him, but if he pulls off his A game, he could win. Please don't spoil it for me. Jason Raz was one of my top artists of last year and a few years before that too. So not only do I love his songs, but seeing him perform and dancing, he's so animated and such a showman, like winking at the camera and making all these facial expressions like, ah, you know, he's making these dancing movements. He's just so into it, a true showman. Anyway, something that I slacked on today was getting back into exercise, even though my soreness is getting better for sure. That's something that I should review in my weekly review you so that I can tackle it better the next week. Today was a full day. 1% better every day, baby. I've been on my computer for hours and Mochi's just been keeping me company. <laughs> She's just <laughs> lying down next to me. Oh, I think she knows I'm just about to get up. Dega much much Dega much much Dega much much Dega much much Dega 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 you have to be on the blanket <laughs> Mochi, checking Tigger out. <laughs> yeah, has to be on the blanket. <laughs> um. <laughs> Mochi.